Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, Leader Pelosi, members of the Congressional Delegation, President and members of the American Chamber of Commerce, and U.S. Embassy Representative Dr. Stephen Anderson, on behalf of the American Chamber of Commerce, you're all very welcome to our breakfast briefing this morning. Uh, we're very honoured to host such a senior delegation and to be part of your official programme. Uh, we know you had your political briefings with on Taoiseach last night and members of the Dáil, and uh, we're delighted to provide the business briefing uh, on the Ireland-US economic relationship. Now, as you know, the American Chamber of Commerce represents over 600 US companies here in Ireland of multi-sectors of industry, including pharmaceutical, biotechnology, ICT, financial services, digital media, international uh, traded services, and all of those sectors are represented here in the room this morning by our member companies who have traveled, I would say, from all over the country to be here this morning, so we're all, we're, we're all delighted with that. Uh, since the global economic crisis started three years ago, the economic relationship between Ireland and the United States has grown even stronger. And uh, I suppose to give you an overview on the economic ties between our two countries, um, I'm personally very honoured and delighted to introduce the President of the American Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Peter O'Neill. Peter is Managing Director of IBM Ireland, one of the longest established and largest multinationals in the country. They have over 3,000 people employed here in Dublin, Cork and Galway. IBM are providing very high value uh, products, services and business expertise to a wide range of, of, co of companies, both here in Ireland and indeed around the globe. Now for us in the American Chamber of Commerce and for our member companies, it's all about global competitiveness and the success of our companies globally. So we are very fortunate to have the global perspective and the global leadership that Peter brings to being President of the American Chamber. So for a short presentation on the economic ties between our two countries, it's my pleasure to introduce and hand the podium over to Peter O'Neill. Thanks very much, Joanne, for that introduction. Uh, Leader Pelosi, uh, esteemed members of the delegation, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honour to welcome you here this morning as President of the American Chamber of Commerce Ireland. I think since its establishment in 1961, the Chamber has developed a very strong reputation for helping US businesses in Ireland to thrive and grow in the pursuit of new markets. I understand this is the final day of the delegation's uh, visit uh, to Ireland, so I trust you, you've had an informative and an enjoyable uh, uh, trip here. I hope also that during your visit you have experienced Ireland's uh, famous welcomes and as it is of course St. Patrick's Week, I'd like to wish you our own Cade Mila Folce, our 100,000 welcomes on behalf of the American Chamber. I know this delegation comes to Ireland well briefed and I think with a very keen understanding of Ireland's place in the world. Uh, you know of course of our deep affinity and connection with the United States of America. It's my hope, therefore, that your brief stay has been informative and that you will return to Washington with further evidence that Ireland is very much a country that is dealing with its challenges and is clearly open for business. Ireland has returned to growth, albeit at modest levels. For the first time since 2007, Ireland recorded positive jobs growth in the fourth quarter of last year. This recovery is being led by our export-centric uh, industries, many of whom are represented here this morning. Exports from the country reached record levels last year, with a strong focus on the European marketplace. Investment from foreign countries, as Joanne mentioned, including the US, has continued. We remain an attractive platform to access European markets for ICT, for life sciences, and for the internationally traded services sectors. Since 2007, we have become more cost competitive, while at the same time enterprises have been able to deliver significant productivity gains, and this combination has been driving a strong expansion of exports over the past two years. The Irish economy's fundamental strength, I think, is sustained through the durability of the key sectors of industry built up over the past three decades. Looking at my own sector, ICT, Ireland is home to over 230 ICT firms, including nine of the top 10, as listed by Forbes magazine. Between thriving indigenous companies and the multinational presence, ICT now accounts for 25% of our exports. Ireland is also an established hub for increasing number of high-tech and digital me media firms. Irish subsidiaries of US companies act as a gateway to the skills, capabilities, and markets of Europe. 
and these operations frequently constitute strategic global investments by their parent companies. As I see my colleague John Herlihy from Google here this morning, I hope John won't mind me quoting his company's Vice President of Engineering, Nelson Matos, who said a few years ago, if the lights were to go out in California, Dublin would maintain Google worldwide. Medical technologies and biopharma, as Joanne mentioned, also represent a diverse life science industry that has benefited from a reputation for rapid delivery of projects, process quality, and regulatory compliance. And these industry uh, clusters have established themselves as important global centres of manufacturing and development excellence for their corporations. Finally, international trade and financial service firms have established a strong beachhead in Ireland from which to operate an integrated service platform within Europe. The continuing initiatives to further the single EU market for services will present ever greater opportunities in the decade ahead for companies here to access the vast market in its entirety. So if, if we look at this, you know, what do all these sectors have in common and why are they growing in Ireland? Certainly we have a highly skilled workforce operating in a flexible uh, labour market. We have investment incentives that are attractive to companies that wish to operate in an international marketplace. And there is a regulatory environment that is pro-business and seeks to support ori uh, export-oriented investment. But at the end of the day, Ireland is a small country and clearly there must be something more. And I think the answer to that is that Ireland acts as a gateway to Europe. Europe retains over 22% of the world's GDP and 25% of its personal consumption, as well as a large share of global wealth and innovation. Global markets demand that firms have global reach and Ireland is the perfect location in which to access the European market. A report out just last week by the Economist Intelligence Unit revealed that for 58% of businesses with international operations in Ireland, it was access to new markets that was the single, single biggest contributing factor to investing here. In front of you all is a copy of a recent report commissioned by the American Chamber in Ireland. It details much more comprehensively than I can achieve in this brief presentation the mutually beneficial economic relationship between Ireland and the United States of America. It was written by Joseph Quinlan, a leading economist and Wall Street commentator on the transatlantic US-EU economy and a fellow at Johns Hopkins University in Washington. As you can see from its title, I think the single biggest conclusion from Joseph Quinlan's <coughs> analysis is that this trade and investment relationship between our two countries is one that is built to last. And that's certainly a conclusion that I would agree with. The US companies in this country, in seeking access to the EU and wider world markets, now number 600 and provide valuable employment to 100,000 people nationwide. <coughs> Likewise, Irish companies that wish to grow into the equally important US market now employ 120,000 people and are represented in 1,300 locations across the 50 states. Indeed, according to the US uh, Department of Commerce, Irish foreign direct investment to the US uh, recorded a new high of more than $30 billion in 2010. There's no commercial linkage bigger or more important or more integrated than the transatlantic economy. It now generates $5 trillion annually and supports 15 million jobs on both sides of the Atlantic. The Built to Last report shows the true driver of the transatlantic economy is investment. This investment enables companies to seek new opportunities in new markets. And I think it is a positive endorsement of the role that Ireland plays within the transatlantic economy that since 2008, despite the various financial crises that have affected the world economy, this relationship has grown deeper. So it is on that positive note, I would like to thank the delegation for their attention and for your visit to these shores. And it's now my great pleasure to introduce the chair of the delegation, Leader Nancy Pelosi. Leader Pelosi has been a member of the House of Representatives since 1987, serving California's eighth district, which covers the city of San Francisco. She served as Speaker of the House from 2007 to 2010, becoming the first woman in American history to hold that position. Throughout her illustrious career, she's been a strong supporter of creating education opportunities, as well as health care reform and human rights. Leader Pelosi, we are delighted to have you with us today. Members of the Chamber, please join me in welcoming Leader Nancy Pelosi.
thank you very much, Peter, for <coughs> and to Joanne as well for bringing us all together this morning. I'm going to yield to my distinguished colleague uh, from uh, the Pittsburgh area, since he uh, it has as his constituent uh, Ambassador Rooney. Uh, he has been looking forward to sharing some thoughts with you about this relationship. Uh, I look forward to studying this uh, built to last report uh, on the plane as we leave here, but I would just say that in addition to some of what is on that U.S.-Ireland relationship would be family ties, common language, uh, proximity geographically, which is uh, uh, useful to, plat to uh, uh, access uh, uh, the EU and other, um, uh, other markets, uh, some of them emerging, some of them established and also, uh, just uh, as uh, the Tishak said to us last night, the passion of the young people uh, in, a po in the possible workforce for US, uh, US employers here. Uh, we thank you for what you do to, uh, to uh, represent our country, if you are ambassadors, all of you, and, and whether you're American or not, if your company is, uh, you're a manifestation of the United States of America. Uh, in Ireland, and for that we are grateful to you. We consider you a, a, a source of much, uh, not only economic growth uh, for the, your companies, but also as a, a, a sign of the friendship between the United States and Ireland. And with that, I'm going to yield to Mike Doyle from uh, Pittsburgh, who will uh, introduce other members of our delegation and elaborate on how proud he is to be an Irish American and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and try to uh, uh, entice you to Pittsburgh or Pittsburgh to, uh, to, uh, to Ireland. Well, well, thank you, Leader Pelosi. Uh, first of all, I, I, my claim to fame is I, I get to claim Ambassador Rooney as, as my constituent and uh, actually going to be back in Pittsburgh Friday uh, to have lunch with him and uh, we have a little thing called the St. Patrick's Day Parade uh, Saturday <laughs> in Pittsburgh and uh, I lead one of the divisions for the last 10 years uh, and uh, my absence there would be duly noted and not good for my election which is coming up in five years. <laughs> so I, I won't be joining the uh, delegation now. I, I learned about 15 minutes ago that I was interested in sharing some of my thoughts here. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and uh, since Nick Joe Rahal kept us at that pub right outside until <laughs> uh, late last night. Uh, but I, I, want, I do want to introduce some of my colleagues that are here. Uh, uh, we're, we're very thrilled. It's always good to be back in, in, in Ireland. And, and the relationship between our two countries is, is so strong. Many of us uh, obviously claim families here. I'll be meeting with my relatives at 4 o'clock today. Uh, originally from County Mayo, there were all farmers there, but uh, now uh, they live in Churchtown, and uh, the Doyles that stayed did, I think, a little bit better than the Doyles that went over <laughs> to the States from what I've been able to see, but uh, it's good to see both sides uh, prospering. But uh, at Leader Pelosi's table is also one of our senior members, George Miller from California. George. And, and my good friend and, and uh, neighbor in West Virginia, another senior member of our delegation, uh, Nick Joe Rahal. Uh, another senior member of our delegation and uh, my colleague on the Energy and Commerce Committee, uh, Ed Markey from Massachusetts. And uh, someone I think that's in Ireland as much as the United States uh, and, and the leader of our Friends of Ireland delegation in Congress, uh, Richie Neal. Also a, a senior member of the Ways and Means Committee and a great believer in free trade, right Rich? And uh, also from New York, uh, another senior member, Carol Maloney. And uh, joining me at, at, at our table too, one of our, our newer members, uh, and the uh, first um, Muslim member of the United States Congress, Keith Ellison. Keith's done a fantastic job and just recently had a, a PSA uh, here in Ireland. Uh, we, were, we were all surprised to learn there's about 50,000 uh, Muslims in Ireland and uh, Keith was sharing some of his experiences uh, after 9-11 and, and uh, uh, some of his experiences in the United States Congress since uh, first coming. Uh, I think... 
I didn't miss anyone, did I? <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I think all of us uh, realize that, you know, with, with the economic downturn, that we're all starting to dig our, our, ourselves back out. And in the United States, uh, just as here in Ireland, we've turned a corner. Uh, the, the bleeding has stopped and we're making slow progress uh, in, in the right direction, which is very important. Uh, for the relationship here, uh, and John, uh, Google, by the way, in Pittsburgh is alive and well and growing. Uh, <laughs> if the lights ever shut out in California, Pittsburgh's ready to <laughs> Just uh, so you know, we'll be, we'll be around to help you. Yeah, the ambassador reminds me of that. <laughs> But uh, anyways, many, many of your companies do business, obviously, in my state of Pennsylvania uh, and, and in Pittsburgh. And, and uh, it, it's great to see uh, uh, the mutually beneficial relationship we have in the United States and Ireland. Uh, I think about equal numbers uh, of American and, and Irish are employed by uh, U.S. And, and Irish companies. So uh, it's a two-way street, and it's, it's good for both countries. Uh, that's a good thing. The challenges that lie ahead, of course, is... is we're trying to uh, create economic growth and more jobs in America. Uh, there's a lot of pressure in, in the United States Congress and locally to have our companies keep investment you know, inward in America and grow those companies and spend the money in our own country. Uh, that's some of the challenges we face uh, going into the future uh, that some American companies will be under. Obviously, that affects uh, decisions that get placed up other places in the world. But I think the strategic positioning uh, of Ireland as a gateway to Europe uh, and, and all the other things that, that you have going for you, not only in the, the uh, reg regulatory side and tax side, but also the quality of life uh, at, being in Ireland, uh, I think is very, very attractive uh, for many companies and the people who work in those companies. Uh, so I think it's a relationship that's going to grow. Uh, we're gonna, going to get through these times. We had uh, good talks with the Taoiseach uh, and many others. Today we'll be uh, talking to some of the ministers. Uh, we have a particular focus this morning on some uh, energy issues. Uh, that's going to be key for both of our countries moving forward. Uh, so uh, we're very excited to be here. This has been a, uh, a short trip. Uh, but a very informative one, and, and uh, which was highlighted last night uh, by the award that Leader Pelosi received at Trinity College, which was uh, quite quite a, uh, an extraordinary affair. Uh, and we've been enjoying our stay here, and we look forward to uh, continuing our, our dialogue with uh, our, our fellow uh, people here in Ireland, uh, and that we're, we're going to continue our efforts back in America, just like they are in the Irish government, to keep these economies moving forward. Uh, so that we can continue to pe keep people working. Uh, that's, that's the goal that we all share together, uh, and the relationship remains strong. We'll be hosting the Taoiseach and, and many other members of, of, of the Irish uh, delegation in Washington, D.C. Uh, next week, so we're looking forward that, to that, too. But uh, thank you very much, and let's enjoy breakfast. Thank you.